Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Welcome to the exciting world of narrow complex tachycardia and SBT. In today's sketch, we'll talk about some of the different causes of a narrow complex tachycardia and learn some electrophysiology and how to evaluate and treat these patients. And what better place to talk about narrow complexes than at a dog show uh, complex? Actually, maybe there is a better place. But here's the better question. When I say narrow complex tachycardia, how tacky and narrow are we talking here? Well, on the ECG, first evaluate the rate. The normal resting adult heart rate should be between 60 and 100 beats per minute, although sometimes it's much lower in a healthy young patient or in athletes. Tachyarrhythmias are abnormal rhythms with a ventricular rate over 100. Next, decide whether this tachycardia is narrow or wide complex. If the QRS complex is less than 120 milliseconds, in other words, less than three little boxes, each equal to 40 milliseconds, it's classified as narrow complex. Easy peasy. Well, not the P, but easy QRSE. Notice the dog show logo here. The beam of light is like the QRS spike, and it's narrower than the three boxes of the podium. We care about the width because it tells us if the beat passed through the AV node to hit the conduction system of the ventricle, which creates a narrow QRS. A wide QRS complex develops when the beat takes a sneaky shortcut to get to the ventricles, or if the beat originates in the ventricle itself. This is all covered in our wide complex tachycardia sketch over at the police station. Remember that the QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization and that the duration of the QRS complex is the amount of time it takes for the ventricle to depolarize. If our electrical current is flowing from the atrium through the AV node and down the normal conduction system of the heart, this is the fastest way for the heart to depolarize and should take less than 120 milliseconds, creating a narrow complex. So we assume that any narrow QRS complex originated above the AV node and thus is supraventricular. Super. Now that we've identified a narrow QRS tachycardia, it's time to look at the rhythm. Is it regular or irregular? Generally, the easiest way to do this is to measure the RR intervals. Well, if you take a look at the notes in the back of this dog show complex, you'll notice that the left side of the sketch will be dedicated to regular rhythms, while the right side will be all about the irregular. It's like frickin' jazz over there. Let's start on the left with the regular rhythms. Signs up awkwardly slant rhymes with the word sinus, you know what I mean? Meant to remind you of sinus tachycardia, the most common supraventricular tachycardia. The sinus part just means that the impulse originates in the SA node and travels down the conduction system of the atrium to depolarize the AV node. Remember that the P wave represents atrial depolarization, so sinus tachycardia can be identified if every single beat has a regular P wave preceding every QRS complex, all of which will be narrow complex. This is why the sign features a P-tail puppy preceding every QRS dress. These P's should also be normal looking, and by that I mean upright in 2, 3, and AVL. Watch out, because when the rate is really fast, it can be difficult to see these P waves. The Valsalva maneuver, carotid sinus massage, or IV adenosine may be used to slow down the heart a bit and spot those P's. We'll show this in action a little later. Conveniently, these maneuvers will also terminate in AVRT or AVNRT rhythm. What's AVNRT, you ask? Well, remember that SVT or PSVT stands for supraventricular tachycardia or paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia. As we hinted earlier, technically any tachycardic rhythm that starts above the level of the ventricle, including sinus tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, and atrial flutter, falls in the category of SVT. It's kind of like this heart-shaped purse here. All the barks are coming from the atria, and in the setting of SVT, all the beats are coming from above the ventricles. That's all it means. Paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia is more commonly used to describe tachycardia caused by a re-entrant circuit of conduction. In other words, after ventricular contraction, the impulse continues through an extra pathway, reactivating the ventricular conduction system. And the loop continues. So, as this dog fancier here sneaks in through a special re-entry point, keep in mind that this extra pathway consists of an accessory pathway away from the AV node, or a re-entrant circuit right around the AV node itself. 
The re-entrant circuit of electricity produces a regular tachycardia with a rate generally between 150 and 250 beats per minute. Again, just want to remind you that we're on the regular rhythm side of the room here, hence the regular notes in the back. These tachycardic events are sudden and recurrent, paroxysmal, if you will. 